We're going to talk about community museums, and you may ask yourself, well, what is a community museum? Well, if you tuned in yesterday, the Bytown Museum is a great example. We had uh, Grant Vogel on the show talking about the fact that they're going to be open for the summer season, a full season, and many community museums, of course, are going through that same thing. And here to tell us more about that, I am joined by Executive Director of the Ottawa Museum Network, Sarah McKenzie. Welcome, Sarah. Great Hi, to Dad. have you Thank here. Thank you for having me. Um, let's talk about the Ottawa Museum ne mm. Network. What, what, what it's, it's is its purpose? So we're a network of 11 small city-owned and community museums. Uh, we're a network that helps with marketing, professional development, revenue generation. So we help these small museums that may not have the budget or the people to do some of the things that they need to do. So we support uh, all the museums that are small in Ottawa. And I'm sure like many industries, they lost a lot of momentum, right? Uh, during the pandemic. Yeah. And you know, as I mentioned, Grant was here yesterday yeah. and I know they all did their best to bring some mm -hmm. some of that virtual yeah. um, you know information to people and, yeah. and make it exciting but there's mm -hmm. nothing like actually visiting the museum no right? exactly and they were closed for a significant amount of time in fact in 2022 our revenues were down 95 percent um, across the board so last year some of the museums started to open again we are seeing some people coming back but uh, we're hoping this is our first full season and that we'll see more people coming coming out to support the small museums. I mentioned Bytown, I think mm -hmm. you mentioned a couple as well, but uh, yep. walk us through some of the others yeah, here in, sure. in the Ottawa We're region. In all parts of Ottawa, so um, a lot of people are aware about the Diefenbunker, Canada's uh, yes. Cold War Museum. Out in the West End as well, we have the Goldburn Museum. We have Watson's Mill and Dickinson House in Manatick. Uh, Cumberland Heritage Village Museum, way out in Cumberland. Uh, Vanier Museo Park, so yes. right in the center of Vanier there, we have the Unurban Sugar Bush, which is the only one in North America. Uh, we also have other small museums like Nepean, uh, Osgood. So all these all these small museums, which really act as community hubs for the locations that they're in, and each of them kind of tell a little bit of a different part of Ottawa's uh, right. story. Yeah. Um, how important are they? You know, because I think so, I'm glad you, you described it that way. Because I think sometimes you know with the larger museums, we don't really get to focus in on mm -hmm. on specific communities. Mm -hmm. uh, has it been a struggle to keep these museums? museums around mm -hmm. for this long? Mm -hmm. Well, they have a lot of support locally. They do. So that is, I yeah. think, it really, really important. They are locations or hubs where community can gather, there are special events, um, they contribute to well-being of the of the community, you know, they make Ottawa a more vibrant place to live, um, and some of them are very special to the, uh, you know, local community members. Yeah, they take a very lot of pride special. in them. I, I, I live in Vanier, so yes. I know how much pride that everyone takes Absolutely. in that museum park. Yeah. Uh, it is... Um, Museum Month, right? The month That's of May right. is Museum Month. So what, what is the purpose of Museum Month? How is it mm -hmm. celebrated? What events go around uh, around sure. that? Sure. So Museum Month is an initiative of the Ottawa Museum Association. So it's actually celebrated the whole month by over 700 museums, galleries, and heritage sites in the province. Oh, wow. Um, and it really is about kicking off the summer season. There are, aren't specific events, but we're all kind of celebrating, reopening, um, getting, you know, we see the end of school coming. So there's all kinds of summer camps coming out, markets. So the museums really come to life in the summer. And some of our museums have beautiful property too. You think right. Penny's Point or Cumberland, uh, Billings Estate. These are beautiful places to go visit, not just the museum, but the grounds and to picnic and participate in events. So they all have very different experiences. I understand the mayor also made a proclamation. That's that, right. That was obviously an important part, right, of, of this month celebration. Yes, and the mayor is a fan of museums, so he did proclaim May as Museum Month in Ottawa, so we're very excited about that, and it really shows that, you know, the city supports the museums. They do have five museums that they run themselves that are part of our network, right. and it's uh, really important for Ottawa's heritage and culture sector. Um, something you're doing over the summer is this sort mm -hmm. of free play during the summer. Tell me about that. Yes, so the city of Ottawa 
announced free play so uh, for youth and children to get more active. Okay. So a couple of our museums are involved in that. So Cumberland Heritage Village Museum and Billings Estate, uh, a historic site, will have free admission for youth um, under the age of 17 between the end of Ju June until early September. So that encourages people to get out there and take their families. Now most of the rest of our museums, a lot of them are free. So right. it is very cost effective to go to the community museums. And I think the beauty is, you know, Grant spoke about it yesterday, is um, with probably all of these museums, mm -hmm. you don't see everything that they have available at any given time, <laughs> no, right? I think yeah. I think Grant mentioned they showcase 5% yes. of what they have. Is, yep. is that pretty common within the, the network of museums here yeah. in Ottawa? That is, very, that is very common. And I'm hoping that with Doors Open, Ottawa is coming up and yes. most of our museums are participating. That's a great opportunity to ask about those kinds of things. And, and some of the museums will bring out some artifacts and displays that they may not be permanent. So I know that a lot of the museums do these um, temporary ex exhibitions as well. So Bytown was talking about their new one about the fires in Ottawa. Right, yeah. You know, and, and it enables them to kind of bring out some of their collection to share with the public um, and rotate it on an ongoing basis. Um, like the Bytown, I imagine all of them are open to in-person. They're back to full full hours now? Just about. So okay. mo uh, some of them just opened last weekend okay. and some of them never closed. The Defund Bunker is open year-round. Right, right. Um, but we did have a lot of the city museums Museums opened on Sunday and Bytown opened on the weekend. Um, Vanier Museo Park, while the Sugar Shack had been open for uh, maple sugar season, uh, their main museum wasn't open, but they've been uh, renewing it and they're getting ready right. to open it for the season as well. And they will have all new displays as well and everything refreshed there too. You mentioned the Diefen Bunker. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's a popular spot for people to, to film and, yep. and that sort of thing as well. So I get, does that obviously help in the, you know, in the, in the operations of a museum like that? Oh, I'm sure it does. Right? Yeah, it yeah. attracts it attracts people. In fact, there was um, some media from the U.S. that was covering the bunker as a pretty neat location nice. to visit. And yeah, film crews love going there. Oh, it's such there. a cool space. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. And they've done some some mm -hmm. really unique events there. And all the museums do it. Sarah, really appreciate the time today. Thanks yeah. so much for no joining problem. us. And as Sarah said, oh, uh, Open Doors is uh, coming up as well. So another great opportunity to visit these local museums. We'll be right back.